Today, Horsepower takes on a one-of-a-kind car and engine project. We got our hands on the original Kit 33 hot rod from Factory 5 Racing. The chassis here is serial number 001. Now, with the help of their build team, we're going to transform this prototype development mule into a potent show car. One that'll star at Ford's display at this year's SEMA show. Now, it'll be a combination of vintage styling, race car engineering, and for power, Ford's brand new eco-friendly 5-liter Coyote. Before we get started, though, here's a behind-the-scenes look at how these high-tech bodies and chassis are built. It's no secret the guys at Factory 5 are certified car nuts. But Dave Smith, the president and co-founder, needed a little extra prodding when it came to greenlighting the 33 Hot Rod project. I had driven a friend's hot rod. It was a 33 and had a big 502 motor. It was a great car, and when I went to stop, it was, it was a terror. And I kind of got a bad idea about hot rods, that they looked good, but they didn't perform. And our charter at Factor 5 has always been technology and performance, and technology enables performance. So Jim kind of convinced me that he could make a hot rod handle. He says, Dave, I can make a sports car. And he, his only requirement was he wanted freedom of design. We were able to start from a clean sheet of paper and, and do, we, wanted, we knew we wanted to do inboard coilovers because the car is going to be at some points an open wheel car versus sometimes it's going to have fenders. Uh, so we forged our own spindles, came up with our own geometry, basically made the whole thing from scratch to fit the rear suspension you know, to match the two. And the rear suspension was something we lifted out of our Challenge Series cars. So when we design our suspension, basically what we do is we have a software program where we map it out, then we design all the components on SolidWorks. We can fit them to the chassis ahead of time, make sure there's no clearance issues, make sure the geometry is the way we expect it. And basically everything is working before we even start to assemble the first model. There are a lot of great design tools out there, but they get in the way of the design. The best tools in the world are the ones that the engineers and designers don't even realize that they're using. CAD and computers are just today's tools. You know, they're a generation removed from traditionalists, but they're enabling us to make cars that perform and look good. And uh, they're the modern tools of a modern craftsman, but we're still craftsmen. Only after the design has gone through rigorous testing in the virtual world and the real world does it go into production. It all starts with the SolidWorks design jig. It acts as a template to ensure the frame is put together accurately every time. CNC'd high-grade tubing is hand-assembled and tack welded into place. Some of the larger substructures are welded on the robot to streamline the process. Laser cut components like this door hinge fit together like puzzle pieces and then get welded into place. Once it's all together, the frame is meticulously finish welded by hand and then it's off to get powder coated. Meanwhile, the fiberglass body panels are being laid out, cured and trimmed. Everything comes together in the assembly area. CNC aluminum panels are bent and put in place, and then the body is dropped on. Finally, it's all loaded up and ready to be sent out to the next lucky owner and builder. So I'm just really happy you talked me into the project. I mean, this car is really delivered on the performance side, and from an engineering standpoint, I think it's pretty impressive. It shows what we can do. Yeah, thanks. I, I really do think that this is our spin on a hot rod, and that's that's you know kind of been the theory all along is that you know we just keep building the things we know how to build, and if we like them, hopefully other people will like them too. As a mule, that chassis's been tested with all kinds of V8s, but nothing like what we're going to throw at it. It's Ford's brand new 5 liter Coyote crate engine. In a minute, we're going to take a closer look at it, dyno it, and install it in our 33, keeping that show rod all Ford. It's also going to wear a new body. Now, paint is one of the ways you can actually personalize your 33 when you buy it as a kit. There's one just like this down the hall in the muscle car shop. In fact, those guys have been at it hard, laying their own special paint treatment. You'll see the results later when we drop the body on the chassis. We're about to bear down on the performance part of this project. The real fun is just ahead. Stay with us.
The factory muscle car wars are on again, with Ford, GM, and Chrysler each battling it out to prove they've got the best modern-day muscle machine. It's a battleground for performance and horsepower, and now Ford has really raised the bar with its new 5-liter Coyote for the 2011 Mustang GT. We not only have the crate engine, we have one of the brains behind it, Jesse Kershaw from the Ford Racing Division. But I think it'll make at least the 412. The Pony Wars are definitely on. The Brand X competition has 400 plus horsepower engines. And while we've always done very well in shootouts against them, uh, we really need to have that number, that over 400 horsepower number. And the way to get it was to bring back the five liter in a four valve configuration. We integrated some new items to be able to have emissions compliancy and fuel efficiency and have the performance for the torque and peak horsepower. Our throttle body position is on the front of the engine, which is very different than the old four valves. We went with very lightweight components in the engine to, because obviously weight is the enemy of both performance and fuel economy. Uh, we used a composite plastic intake manifold, which not only does it save weight, it also sheds heat. We went to a composite plastic valve cover, which saved quite a bit of weight compared to the old aluminum valve covers. And just the casting technology itself has gotten a lot better. If you look at the blocking, look at the cylinder heads, you see the ribbing that was engineered into it. So we have all the strength, in fact, more strength than any 4.6 block we've ever developed. But at the same time, we're able to have these cavities where we took material out and we have pockets where we don't need the material. We have all the strength with the design of the block. Well, like usual, we couldn't help it. We had to get inside to take a look. The tall tubes are where the spark plugs are located. It's got dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder. And up front, for total control of the cams, there's a phaser for each. On the bottom side, the pan gasket also doubles as the windage tray. It's got six bolt mains, a forged crank, forged powdered metal rods, and hyper-eutectic pistons. Now here's something unique for a stock engine. It's got oil squirters for each piston. Certainly Ford Racing is trying to step up with performance packs for handling and increased power. Uh, we're working, uh, developing on an intake manifold for it, headers, uh, CNC cylinder heads. I mean, you name it, we want to have the gambit covered, including a, a positive displacement supercharger kit. This is no doubt a TV first, putting one of these new 5.0s on a dyno. I've never even heard it run, so just when we hear it on the dyno, I'm, I'm really you know, excited for that and to see what kind of numbers it puts out. You remember Jim Shank from Factory 5 Racing. He was here when we modified one of their GMT supercars. He not only designs and builds them, he races them too. So what's his game plan for the 33 today? This thing's fun, dude. <laughs> Basically what we have to do is convert the drivetrain so that it's, we were taking out a small block and now we're going to go with the new 5.0. The, new the engine mounts have changed and the fuel system has changed. The transmission is a Tremec 3550 uh, that we had in the car before. So basically all we have to do is change the bell housing, flywheel and clutch. So getting all that stuff ready for the new engine is the biggest thing. And then while we're here, we, we can take advantage of the fact that the car's apart, clean up some of the parts, you know, plate some of the parts, because the car does have a lot of hard miles on it. We're reusing the fuel cell, wiring, and brake reservoirs. Oh, and the horn, of course. The nine inch rear end stays too, after we load it with stronger brakes to match that Coyote. It's a Pro Plus system from Bear, starting with a billet backing plate. The axles go back in now, along with the differential C-clip and spacer. This floating self-aligning caliper bracket eliminates the need for shims, followed by massive 14-inch two-piece slotted rotors and powder-coated six-piston calipers that use the same pads as the Corvette C5s and C6s. Put it in a heated chrome. We sent out all the suspension plate. pieces to Steve Tracy at Advanced Plating. Passivates it where it won't oxidize. For a cool brushed nickel finish. On the front, those pieces are exposed, so that, that'll give us a good look. That's some beefy stuff, man. While Andy finishes out back, Perfect. The front upper control arms can go on first. We're upgrading the shocks to these adjustable aluminum body pieces from Kony. Notice how they install inboard just like the Indy cars. Next, lower control arms can go on, followed by the spindles. The inboard shocks are fantastic. They get the shocks in and out of the wind. You know, they're, they're concealed completely by the engine sides. We can control leverage rates and spring ratios and that kind of thing by the lengths of the arms. Finally, the Bear Pro Plus front brakes. Again, 14-inch rotors and six-piston calipers. Are you ready? With the control arms installed, the rear end can go up in place, 
And these Factory 5 guys are really making some progress. Down the hall, so is Rick, who's moved on to the tiny brushes. And when we come back, you'll get to hear this coyote howl. Stay tuned. Horsepower, we're saving Factory 5's hot rod mule from the pasture, transforming it into a SEMA show car with show stopping brakes, satin nickel plated suspension pieces, not to mention Muscle Car Rick's trick paint job. For power, Ford's all new 5 liter 32 valve Coyote. The challenge has been how do you install it? There is a little bit of a mystery to it with late model fuel injection, especially when you have electronic throttle control, you have variable cam timing, you have this pedal that isn't physically attached to anything. And what we were able to do is develop our kit um, for a fairly easy install with done right performance. We would always say we can never remove the mystery, but we think we've done a pretty good job of removing the complexity. And they did that with this simple box and harness that powers everything, including the Ford's computer, which does all the rest. I'm pretty sure it's 6800. 68. All Mike has to do is decide how far to push the pedal with its new engine. The advertised horsepower, 412, but we think it's got a bigger power potential than that, and we're about to prove it. 460 wow. power, 411 foot-pounds at 4,400. And we didn't, hit the, we didn't hit the rev limit there. No. Hey, how high can we rev this? With a quick confirmation of where the rev limiter is at, we're ready for one more run. 7,300, he 7, says. He all says right. we ran it like that all day. OK. All right. That was the limiter there. Yep. 465 at 68, 413 at 49. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it looks really good. Thanks for And the consistency is really what you want, right? You Absolutely. want the flat torque. You want horsepower under the curve, mm -hmm. and you want consistent horsepower. So yeah, I'm that very pleased it. with this. Yeah. We've also it. got some powerful bling for the 33. Grinning Auto Company made us a one-off custom set of five-piece wheels painted by Rick Bacon that Jesse Grinning will assemble. The inspiration came from the old Ford Steely wheels that had the beauty trim ring and just a snap-in center cap. Outer barrel, inner barrel, and we put those together, and then we slide the wheel center together once the beauty ring is placed onto the center, then we slide that into place and then bolt everything all together. And then we put a bead of silicone on the inside to seal the seam up. It's ready for tires. I think it's going to look very good, especially with what Rick's done with the body and everything else. It's a perfect match. Oh, man. I don't think uh, we could have picked out a better color. That was the same theory Wayne and Pam McGriff from M&M Hot Rod Interior supplied to the upholstery. What have you done here? Well, we kind of changed them up a little bit and kind of made them a little more contemporary and uh, covered them with an ultra leather. Kind of give it the old hot rod look. I like it, I like it. I think this will be nice. <laughs> Wish they were in. <laughs> Next, we get to see what the chassis looks like with a new engine after we finish reinstalling the engine mounts and bolting up a new center force clutch. Yep, keep coming. You're, yeah, you're good. Since it's been home to several Ford engines, the last one being a 4.6 liter. This one mounts like a direct replacement. There we go. Now, OK. You thinking this is going to do it? Man, that's in there, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know what it is? It's basically the body was designed around that engine, so it's as tight as it could possibly get. You ready? You good that? This Trimic TKO 5-speed has been here before as well. Only the bell housing was changed for the 5.0. Again, an easy fit. Guys, you're looking at about 250 man hours. It's <laughs> really teed off wives. There you go, guys. She's done, polished, painted. Try not to bang it up too bad, all right? That looks sweet. Yeah, it does. That, that looks really nice. Yeah, the first paint job's free. You wreck it. The second <laughs> one's going to cost you. Right on, man. Be careful with it. Great. That looks fantastic. Thank you, guys. Good luck. Yep. No time for talking in Andy's book. He's mounting the electronics under the dash to get started on the wiring. Mark's jumping ahead with the gauges, and this old mule is a lot closer to the spotlight once again. We really have been through a lot with this car. We've, we've tried a bunch of different engine combinations. It was, it was really one of the original cars that we showed people when we first came out with the product. So it's, it's neat to kind of see it get reborn and something that, uh, that we can show off again. 
watching Horsepower. For a DVD copy of this episode, just go to PowerBlockTV.com and order your copy for just $5.95 plus shipping and handling. Start your own Horsepower collection, delivered right to your door from the PowerBlock. Thanks for hanging with us, because we're hanging late to finish off this 33. Yeah, uh, yeah, water tamp and oil pressure hooked drive up. Drive shaft's hooked up. Bolts are tight on the drive shaft. Now time to check out our wiring skills. It's in here. Oh, that just needs tight? Yeah, this is, this is loose. Okay. Dude, that was gear that time. You got it to work, too. Yeah, so that, that don't work. whatever that is, it's not working. <laughs> That's it. Start shooting fire out of this side. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Time for the body. Ready? Put them down in the back. Easy, easy, hang on. It's a good thing that body has some flex to it. Because that's what it takes to get it over and down on the chest. I'm great. Value, value. value. I need a value after that. Yeah. I'm kind of hoping that since we've had it together once before, it'll go together fairly easily again. Well, the checkered flag is definitely inside. Although the remaining work is tedious, it's also very satisfying. I love this car. I think that this is just, you know, uh, the best looking hot rod we've done to date. I mean, it really is. Just the, the choice of parts, the paint jobs, everything on the car is just out of the park. While it has the classic designs, their technology and the suspension is very modern. And it's great to put a late model powertrain like the five liter engine in there that's light, it's high revving, it's going to make great power and great torque, and um, you know I think it's going to be it's going to be a whole heck of a lot of fun when they get it done. One of the most exciting things I think for me and all of us at the factory is is not when we build the prototypes and we you know we get the finished cars, but when we start to see what other people can do with the car because really that's what we're building. We're not, we're not building cars. We're we're building the start of a project for someone, and and what they come back with as an end result of that project is the most exciting part of the whole deal for us. They got a distinctive design, so everybody will remember it when they see it. But it also communicates a message of responsibility. I mean, underneath that, that's water-based paint. That's an emissions legal CARB program engine. I mean, that's a, an engine that you can drive and be proud of. That is the future of hot rodding.